Yeah. So go to wasmcloud.com, hit docs, go to quick start or get started. Sorry. We can drop the link in here too. View basically all the tools. Yeah. Um, but let me add one more thing here. If you're really on top of it, you can also get clone uh, this repo here. Yeah, in the spirit of choose your adventure, this whole thing is very much There's branches. like we know that people might want to be like, I'm the overachiever and I want to start cloning things now. There you go. Um, if you like to follow along, don't worry, we're not going to rush ahead. There are also, that's why I'm here, that's why there's two of us. So if you get further along, we'll go over this again, but just because some of you are starting. Um, I'll be out there in case you want to try something advanced that's not covered in the workshop too. If you're like, hey, I'm done and I want to know how to do X, I'll be around. Once again, for those who are coming in a little early, if you want to get started downloading tools, there's the QR code or that first link on the top, which is the link to the docs for getting started. Um, it is conference Wi-Fi. It is the first day, but it is still conference Wi-Fi. Okay, it is nine o'clock, so we're gonna get started. We have a lot of material to go through, uh, which means you have a very long and arduous journey. So, this is Choose Your Own Adventure, WASM edition. Uh, my name is Bailey Hayes. I'm the CTO at Cosmonic. Uh, I also serve as the Bicode Alliance Technical Steering Committee Director and also a co-chair for the WASI subgroup within the W3C's WebAssembly Community Group. And I'm joined with Taylor. Hi, Say everyone. Hi, Taylor. I'm Taylor Thomas. I am a member, a co-chair of the CNCF WASM Working Group, longtime open source contributor and WASM Cloud Maintainer. So um, I've been doing this quite a while, just like Bailey. So we're here to hopefully provide our expertise and help you learn some, some choose your own adventuring today. Yes, many adventures. So uh, let me just like give you a little rundown of what to expect. Um, we are gonna run on an application platform that's uh, CNCF Wasm Cloud. I'll explain a little bit of what that is. And then we'll begin our adventure, uh, building, composing, and running WebAssembly applications. Now, if you have any questions, I have a handful of TAs here who are willing to help me. First of all, TA Taylor, uh, please flag him down and he will come help. I'll be uh, giving the workshop live on, up here on stage. I probably won't wander off, but I'm not making any promises. Um, and we also have Brooks Townsend. Hey, Brooks, say hi. Yeah, there's Brooks. Um, and he is uh, also at Cosmonic um, and a core maintainer of Wasm Cloud. So, with that, I also recommend joining our Slack. If you have any questions, you wanna, you're shy maybe, or Taylor's really busy, you can also hop on the Wasm Cloud Slack and ask questions there. Um, and yeah, the uh, again, one more time with the QR code, but uh, if you go to wasmcloud.com, docs, uh, and begin installing WASH uh, for your environment, that'll get you going. WASH actually bundles in a number of tools, so if we can get through that, I think we can get through just about anything on the conference Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, one other thing that you might wanna go ahead and get started downloading, uh, this is the workshop repository. Um, it is uh, Ricochet, WASMCon NA 2024. These will show up again, so don't worry if you didn't get it right over now. Over and over and over again. Okay. So, what is Wasm Cloud? It's Wasm Native Orchestration. Uh, Wasm Cloud itself just graduated to incubating uh, within the CNCF, which is extremely exciting for us. Um, we use Wasm Cloud to deploy and manage Wasm applications on any device, server, cloud, or edge, including your own. So, the first chapter of our journey is going to be about building WebAssembly components. And one of the cool things about building WebAssembly components is that it makes it a lot easier to have faster development cycles um, because you're able to write less boilerplate code, you're doing interface-driven development, um, and a lot of that like leads to maintainable applications. And I'll reiterate all of these key points that I want you to take away in the chapter as we go through. The second chapter is gonna be on composing applications. Now, compose here is definitely overloaded um, because WebAssembly components themselves allow you to compose them together. Uh, so we call that in our Wasm Cloud ecosystem static linking because you do that effectively like at build time you compose your apps. Um, we also support runtime linking and that's what I'm really discussing here on the slide and that's what I'm gonna walk you through. Uh, and runtime linking lets you have an extendable uh, runtime. Um, so whenever we need to update, let's say one of these different uh, providers. So I'm gonna use an example here of um, 
let's say, uh, Nat's messaging and we wanted to swap to Kafka, that's something that I would actually be able to do at runtime by extending my host. There's gonna be a talk tomorrow, uh, tomorrow where we're gonna go really deep into how that tech works. So for, for the sake of this, we're gonna do runtime linking and I'll show you how to compose apps uh, declaratively. And last but not least is chapter three. We're gonna run WASM applications um, across uh, any type of server or cloud. Uh, in this case, we're gonna shoot for uh, a more difficult platform that might scare some people if you're just a WebAssembly person. Um, but we are here, Colo, to KubeCon, so you might guess what we're gonna try to do. Um, but one of the great things about building WebAssembly components and then running them uh, is that we essentially solve the cold start problem. WebAssembly components themselves start in less than a millisecond, uh, so that means that you don't have to keep them running uh, to be able to serve traffic very quickly and efficiently. Um, and they're very uh, great at packing in densely, so uh, and in that way you have this amazing property of vertical auto-scaling. Um, so we can run, for example, 10,000 apps uh, on a single WebAssembly runtime. Uh, and then another aspect here is that WASM Cloud itself gives you a number of reliable uh, and reliability and scalability properties uh, based on the way that our control plane works. And so that also gives us horizontal scaling and uh, failover um, and resiliency at the capability level. Um, so I think with that, we should dive in. Anything we should yeah. add here? Uh, one note of housekeeping as people come in, as usual, the further forward you come, the more seats are open. Don't worry, we don't bite. Maybe, I don't know. I think our characters in this might. Yeah, we might. We, we have, we're, you'll see in a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna keep bringing up this diagram to kind of like level set where we are in the system. Um, but I mentioned it earlier, WASM Cloud itself is extendable at runtime. Uh, and the way this sort of works, we've got these sort of three key entities that exist in our ecosystem. The first one here is a WebAssembly component. Uh, you might guess that one's uh, pretty obvious and that's gonna run inside the WebAssembly sandbox. And so if we crack open one of those, what we'll see is uh, essentially it's got WIT. WIT is our WebAssembly interface type IDL. Um, and then inside the host, uh, we can provide some built-in capabilities. So a lot of that is a lot of the, the standard WASI interfaces. Um, and then we can also extend this with this third entity, and that's what we call providers. You can think of providers as host plugins. They're things that we extend the functionality of our host running in a separate process that allows us to update it at runtime. And so the only last thing I'll highlight here is that these are links. So my component is then linked to uh, the capabilities that are provided by the host and then also the capabilities provided by my providers. And if I wanted to, I can also link it to other components. As far as any component is concerned, these are just interfaces and I can link to them. And that's exactly what this is demonstrating here is two components. Uh, one uh, needs an API, so it imports it. And then another component provides that API, so it exports it. So let's get started. That's enough exposition. I would like you to uh, not go alone uh, because it's dangerous. You should go ahead and grab some docs uh, and follow the QR code uh, here. Um, I'm gonna run through this right now live. Um, so if you, you know, for whatever reason, don't wanna install things on your laptop, that's okay. I will entertain you uh, by running it myself. Yeah, and this is the, the key thing of trying, the, just try it out. That's what we're here for, is trying this all out. Um, this is going to very much follow, we're calling this choose your own adventure because we're following those good old 90s, like choose your own adventure stories. So you're gonna be able to choose at a bunch of different points here. But first things first, make sure you go get things installed. And then I'll be stepping down from the stage here to wander in just a second as we go through this. Um, and you'll get to see a lot of the, the cool things that the Bailey's doing. If you hear my voice all of a sudden come from the ceiling, that's because I'm speaking because I hear questions or things that are common um, as I go around. So uh, follow through Bailey's um, instructions here. She is doing the Mac thing, which is probably gonna be the most uh, common laptop here followed by Linux. So yep. uh, it's gonna be, there's you have easy, options. there's options. <laughs> All right, so I did the first step here. I reinstalled Wash. Now I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Um, and uh, this is already spoiling it, so I'm gonna just pause here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that you can download this repository as well. Um, I'm just making sure folks have a chance to install Wash or at least kick off the command and not compete with each other. Has anyone successfully installed so far? Some of you early comers. Yeah, raise your hand if you have. Okay, good. Hey, if you have any problems, let us know. Brooks is wandering already, and then I'm going to wander in a sec. Yeah. 
Say that again. Make oh, can you uh, command plus Embiggen. that? <laughs> yes. Embiggen it, please. Enhance. Enhance. Is is that better? One more. Thank you. Better now. Everyone in the back can read it now. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So if you're following along and start our quick start, you know the initial thing that we tell you to do is install Wash. Um, but then there's immediately another choice here. And so, as you can guess, in true choose your own adventure fashion, we need to choose our fighter. Uh, in this case, I have uh, two somewhat cursed AI generated images. One is of myself and the other one in here is of Taylor. And so I'm kind of curious out of this audience, who would you choose? Would you prefer to code in Golang and be a gopher? Or would you like to be a Rustation and code in Rust? Yeah, pick your option. You can pick either one. Um, and then you're going to want to run that step because we use some of those variables down here. It'll, it'll help if you copy paste some of the commands. You don't have to. It's just will help. Yeah. Um, and actually, do you all mind raising your hands? I'm just like really curious. Who's, who is ready to try out the new Go tooling that is super easy to write, syntax so easy to read? It's wonderful. Yes. OK. You're and my favorite. You're my memory safety friends. <sighs> Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm, just, I'm just throwing out the stereotypes, okay, some of you rest stations out there. Yeah, and so who is not going to do that and try to forge their own path with the other language supports? Let's go. Ah, there's always someone. Yeah. Um, so if you can uh, compile a WebAssembly component in any of those languages that you're using, sometimes they require an SDK, like componentized Pi or componentized.net. Um, or you can use uh, Go and Rast. I picked these because they're going to be the, you know, the happiest path, I think. Um, but yeah, if you can compile it to a component, you can run it on Wasm Cloud. So be brave and <laughs> make your choice. And now this is our next uh, major decision in our journey, and it's which type of application do we want to build? Um, if you know me, you know that I have two dogs, uh, and I really, really love animals. And so, of course, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I'm going to choose for this one. And it is totally downloading cute dog pictures from the internet. Um, but, hey, if you want to do something that looks more like a real serious business application, uh, you can also try our password checker app. And so to, to pull this down, uh, Wash supports uh, Wash New, and you're able to pass in templates. And so we templatized basically four different uh, projects, um, you know, two for Go, two for Rust. So depending on what language you just chose, uh, pass that in uh, and uh, create a new component. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for Dogfetcher. Now remember, this is just um, just using it for some scaffolding here. So wash all the wash stuff you're going to see today uses open source tooling underneath the hood. Um, we'll say that again and again. We're not doing you're, we're not doing anything fancy here. We're just we're literally wrapping the tooling, making it really easy to do. Way easier, but um, and if you uh, actually let me go ahead and pull up my uh, my repo for running through the workshop. Um, if you go ahead and clone this, you can reference it. I've got all the steps written up here that we're going to run through. So if you are uh, you know, a speedrunner in games, you might be a speedrunner in code. Um, go, you can jump ahead if you'd like. Um, I also have some side quests if you want to go down them later on. Um, but the main thing that I want to highlight here is that throughout, um, I'll also give a shout to some of the Bytecode Alliance tooling directly that we're calling and any of the upstream tooling. So. Uh, wash new component is is really just you know simplifying it. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. Okay, at this point I'm gonna drop down and be walking around. So make sure you raise your hand if you have any questions because we're gonna start getting into code as soon as you've gotten past these steps. Now. Um, everyone been able to find this okay? Are, are most people are you on the step of pulling the repo or do you have a question? Can you show that one more time, Bailey? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I am Ricochet on GitHub. Uh, Ricochet. One more time. WasmCon. Plus one. Okay. Enhance. Enhance okay, again. Go. Okay. <laughs> Is that good? I'm going to jump down. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I clone this repo, open it up. I think I trust myself. All right, what's the first thing I do when I get in a project? 
I try to build it. We've got a command for that. It's called wash dev. And we're building. I'm seeing some files drop in. It's still not done yet, though. Boop, boop, boop. I do see that I created a generated folder here. That's cool. What else we got going on? Let's, let's crack open the main. I see that I am going to be doing WASI HTTP, um, and I am going to stop before we get to part two in this code. But yeah, uh, it looks like I was successfully able to build. I've got two dot wasms here. Now let's see if I'm able to curl this application. Okay, so I was able to curl my really simple app. Um, okay, cool. Um, so let's, we need a little bit of dopamine here. Let's look at a cute dog um, on the internet. Uh, so I fetched from an API that gives me cute animal photos. Uh, we'll do it one more time. So it keeps giving me different random uh, dog photos. Uh, so drop him here. Okay. Oh, I love a pug. Okay. So uh, very simple application to get started, but we're going to keep adding on to it. Um, let me give you a little bit of a code walkthrough for what we have right now. Um, this is uh, our main go. I am making a request for a random dog photo. Um, and uh, when I get what that name is, I'm just responding back right now in my response. Um, has everybody caught up to this point? Um, and, or would it be helpful if I ran through Password Checker? How many people chose Password Checker? Okay, you're serious people. I like you. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do that one too. Where? I'm going to control C out of my wash dev that I was running there. And build me a password checker app. I'm going to do the exact same command that I did before wash dev. taking its time, so you know what? I'm going to also go ahead and do, uh, let's do the rest one too, just so, you know, look ma, no hands. Um, let me scroll down to the rest step. We'll do rest dog fetcher. New component. Dog fetcher. SD. All right, so I've built you the Go dog fetcher. Um, I'm going to build the Go password checker now, um, which I ran in Wash Dev. Built it, looks like. All right, I'm going to hit this URL. Um, close that. And so there's one little trick here uh, that I should call out. Um, inside the password checker, there is one more extra step that we do comment in. I do a little pre-populate uh, just to make sure we don't come up with some not so great passwords on stage. Uh, and, um, and then I ran wash dev here. And I should do a little check. Nothing's running. Cool, cool, cool. And this should not resolve because the way that you reach this API for password checker is a little bit different. It has like a full API check endpoint. So I'm going to curl it. I'm going to curl saying WasmCon is awesome. Oop. Couldn't connect the server. Let's check. All right. So if we start seeing things that are weird, uh, we can look at what apps we might have. Okay. Wash is down. I killed it. That's why. Roll it back up. Ooh, 
Oops, my curl. It's still building. La, la, la. This is the host right. Let me just swap this over. Ha! You can tell it's live. Something's taking a long time to come down. Build, yes. Oh, uh, we didn't finish building. Interesting. Gonna go up to gen. Did we generate? We generated. Okay, that part looks good. Okay, hey, uh, let me show you what it would look like to build this directly yourself. Um, so, using just upstream tools, um, let me walk through how this one works because I know that it works. Um, let me make sure I run this. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I didn't run setup. I told you to run setup. I didn't run setup. Yeah. All right, now I'm running setup. I need to reboot this guy. Do it again. And expecting to see an extra file there. Watch our build, reloading component, watching for changes. Let's see, curl, curl, curl. That one's really strange. Give it one more go, and then I'm just gonna switch gears to our Rust one, and Rust can win. <sighs> but Rust won't win because Go just won. Okay, sorry about that. I did not run the setup step. Make sure you run the setup. Um, hey, I see a hand here. Oh, um, where is Brooks? No Brooks, okay. All right, so. Um, let me walk through a little bit of the code on that one and why it was a bit tricky. Um, so inside my main.go, we are checking for passwords. Um, so I made a curl request uh, and I asked for, um, actually, I'm still getting dog stuff. <sighs> Should not have reached for the moon here. Um, watch out list. Wash down all. Wash dev in this repo. I'm gonna call a mulligan on this one. Password checker for Go? No bueno. Uh, let me try Rusty Doggies. Okay, we're compiling. Just incredibly curious what went wrong there. All right, this is looking pretty good. It's running, it's recompiled. I'm gonna hit my uh, endpoint now, which should just be uh, localhost now. Localhost 8000. Okay, so we got a rusty doggy. I'm gonna just hit this one really quick, and then we're gonna move on to part two, which is a lot more interesting. Okay, cute dog with a plastic bag. Um, so, where are we at? We are at a very simple place so far. Um, we were able to download and build with Go and Rust, except you know one of the Go apps has a bug. Um, but we, in theory, should be able to build with either one of these. Um, and uh, we ran WashDev, and then we crawled it. It's kind of boring. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit about application composition. Now, inside WASM Cloud, we allow you to pass in a, uh, a declarative application manifest. Um, that, what we call this thing is WDAM. That's the sort of scheduler that we use to, to manage it. Uh, WDAM is the WASM Cloud Deployment Manager. Uh, it is based on the open application model spec. Um, so uh, if you are a platform engineer, you might be a little bit more into this one uh, because it's got a lot of YAML. That seems to be y'all's thing. Um, but uh, one of the cool tricks about this is that I'm able to describe, and as you can look inside it, I have the provider that I use, the component that I built, and that is linked uh, together declaratively, and I can upgrade these with versions. So uh, this is really the right way to define an application in all of its pieces and parts. And so I'm gonna bring back this diagram and that's kind of what I'm talking about. This WDAM uh, application manifest combines these things. Um, and step one, let's go ahead and produce a WDAM. So um, I had a good time with the Go, uh, not you, but with the Go password, uh, Go dog fetcher. So that's the one I have open here. And I'm going to, I have run Watch Dev before, uh, making sure that I'm not running it anywhere else. That's surprising. Yeah, I'm gonna close that one out. Cool. Make sure everything's down. Beautiful. Uh, now I'm gonna run Watch Dev, and I'm gonna tell it. Uh, actually, I'll pull up the uh, the workshop notes. I'm gonna pass it a manifest output there. Actually, are you guys able to read this text? I'm realizing that was pretty tiny. So, wash dev, that's sort of my developer application loop. I boot that up, it's watching for file changes, it spins up and, and sets up any providers that I need. You can override what it's used inside the WASM Cloud TOML, uh, but for the most part, it's kind of like those sort of sane defaults that everybody sort of needs to build their applications. Now, if I want to customize this, and if I want to see exactly what wash dev produced for me to run, I run wash dev manifest output dir. Uh, and I'm gonna run that, not there, but in my project that I built. So that's here in dog fetcher. This is the go one, but same command works uh, regardless of language. And I told it to output a manifest and out should have come once it's finished building, la la la. All right, here is my generated manifest. So this is sort of the name of my dev session. Uh, and you can see that it was generated by wash dev. And inside it, I have uh, one of these uh, capabilities. That's my HTTP server. That's what's serving up those requests. Um, because I don't know if you know, WebAssembly components themselves are sandboxed. Everything that they are able to do is granted by the WebAssembly host. Uh, and in our case, the WebAssembly host is linking these things together at runtime to these providers that are external to the host. Uh, so I have this configuration, that's where it's getting that port information. Um, and then it is loading this local file right here from my build directory. Um, and that should be it, yeah. So uh, that's exactly what it's running, which is cool. That's kind of fine, I guess. Um, still a very simple app. Uh, now we know declaratively what it was running. That's nice. Um, but what if we tell it uh, exactly which manifest I want it to run? And let me just make sure I have the right parameter. So I'll pass in wash help. And then inside here, there should be believe it's manifest. I just didn't want to feel so brave. Uh, a lot of manifests this here. So, all right, we created this manifest, so I'm going to copy its name. Actually, you know what? I don't like that name at all, so we're going to go ahead and change it. Let's move this to wadam.yaml, like this. So, I renamed it. Now I'm gonna tell it wash dev, wadam manifest, wadam 
YAML. So it's restarting. It's using that manifest that I produced here. Okay, we're out. So I'm gonna click this uh, URL. Actually, I'll just curl it. Is that right? I think I'm stuck in a build loop. Let me clear. So I'm going to show you a new way to run it. Um, so I've been using WashDev, but as you start moving more towards uh, what you would want to run in production, um, you want to exit your developer loop, start running something more declaratively. So Wash also comes up with uh, a, a utility called WashUp. So what this is going to do is boot up a Wasm Cloud host here running for me. Uh, and so I can look and see that I do have some apps deployed on it. I'm going to go ahead and de delete these apps because I don't want these uh, accidentally running on this. But I think if you ran it, you probably won't see these. Cool. And watch that list. I don't have anything running. So now what I can do is say wash app deploy and pass in that WADM that we just generated. And so it says, okay, I deployed this application. Um, it uh, has that generated name. And so if I look at wash app list, I see that it's deployed. It has a status of deployed. Uh, if I um, curl localhost 8000, I should get back a dog picture, okay. Uh, now, so this is getting a little bit more uh, interesting of an app. Um, so I'm going to keep upgrading it. Next step here uh, is to move on to part two. So everywhere where uh, you see part two in your code, we're going to uncommon it. So in this case, I'm uncommoning it here, right object. Um, I'm just going to search for part two. Okay, and then I have uh, part two code over in a separate file called object store. I'll comment that out as well. Save it. And one more thing I have to do. Um, this is kind of the, the more interesting part. Oh, hey. Uh, sure, let's go. I'm not entirely conceptually up to speed about what we're now actually doing. So oh, the manifest, yeah. is that a manifest for a specific, specific WASM cloud deployment or is that an, a, a WASM application in general or what, what kind of manifest are we talking about here? Yeah, so inside a application manifest that we built, um, this one right now is geared to the component that we just created, but a typical app is really actually made of many different pieces and parts. So if you think about uh, deploying a microservice, when you've deployed a microservice in Cloud Native, you're talking to many different data storages, maybe other microservices, and probably a lot of them need to move a little bit in concert. And so when I think of what is an app and what I define in my application manifest, that's like the declarative state of the thing that I probably would commit into some GitOps pipeline that deploys later out into Kubernetes. Um, and that's different to me from what my WebAssembly component is that I built, because my component without any of those capabilities really can't run, right? I can have a host and it can have sane defaults and kind of guess that based on these interfaces that you're using, I can wire those together. But if I don't uh, pass in a, uh, you know, exactly the right versions that I want to use, you know, and have a really nice upgrade path, that's not such a great experience if you're trying to actually, you know, do any type of platform engineering operation. And so what we're doing right now is graduating from being able to do something that works really well locally. Uh, so we ran WashDev, we're able to curl an API. Um, then we were able to ask WashDev, hey, give me a version of the manifest that you ran here. Uh, now what I'm doing next is, is kind of graduating from that and saying, all right, our application is very plain. <laughs> it is just curling an API and giving you that URL. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to add, at least for this dog fetcher example, I'm going to add using blob store because I'm fetching from some external service, I'm downloading an image, and I want to store it to some type of blob storage. 
Now, that part is kind of interesting, uh, but I'll pause. Did that answer your question? Yeah, so the WADAM was designed, um, so that was something that I, I did a lot of work on WADAM, as well as uh, Brooks in here, and also Kevin, who originally created the ideas here as well. Um, and the the whole point of it is it's using OAM, which is an open manifest spec that's that's in the CNCF. It also, in our Kubernetes integrations for Wasm Cloud, it, it can, you'll see this in a little bit too, it can be kube control applied. Um, and so all of those things are there. So WADAM right now is specific to Wasm Cloud. The components you're writing are not. Um, that's the key thing here. Um, and you'll learn more about like how these host extensions could be added to anything else tomorrow in a talk that I'm giving um, around the concept. That's what Bailey mentioned at the beginning. But uh, so what we're doing right now is Wasm Cloud specific. Um, and Wasm Cloud is like, like Bailey mentioned at the beginning, uh, one way to look at this is this is somewhat of an oversimplification. I'm always careful saying this in front of developers because I know you want the okay. Well, let's dig into the technical details. But for purposes of answering this question, Wasm Cloud is kind of like Kubernetes, but for Wasm. Um, like Wasm has different concepts, different things it can do. Especially as you've seen already, these WIT interfaces, and so that's what Wasm Cloud um, is doing is letting you run that on a distribute in a distributed way, and that manifest is the way for doing it. But we kept it looking like other cloud native things so that it can be used in the ways you'd expect. So that's kind of the, the longer answer. Does that answer it a little bit better? Yeah, and yeah. so before adding blob storage, so like if you wanted to try this right now, you can actually run this one with Wasm Time Serve. And the reason why is that all of these APIs that we're currently using, uh, so I, I ran a command called Wasm Tools Component Wit, um, and inside that command it printed out sort of um, I should say, components themselves are totally introspectable. Like, I can crack one open and look at exactly the interfaces that it needs to run. And so when I'm looking at these interfaces, I see a ton of, uh, you know, WASI colon. Um, I didn't talk about what WASI is, but uh, it's, it's sort of a set of standardized interfaces uh, that a lot of runtimes are working together to, to standardize. And um, it gives you a lot of the capabilities that you kind of expect. But I really think of WASI as sort of that, like that initial set of APIs that we all need to kind of like collaborate on and make it portable. Um, but then once you kind of leave the scope of WASI, you should be building your own APIs. Uh, and that, that could have been, uh, we could make our own custom API, for example, that we exported here. It doesn't have to be a WASI API. Um, so consider that something that bootstraps the ecosystem. Um, and so in this case, the reason why I'm able to use Wasm Time Serve is that I can, I can ask Wasm Time, which is the WebAssembly runtime that Wasm Cloud embeds, uh, and, and run this component. But I'm gonna now add blob storage, which Wasm Time doesn't support yet. It could uh, with a plugin, but uh, right now it doesn't. Um, now, the other aspect here is if I was only ever working with just Wasm Time Serve, I wouldn't be able to do any type of like runtime linking of these things. I wouldn't have like a path for upgrading and, and scaling out and that kind of thing. That's what you get out of Wasm Cloud. Um, and Taylor, I actually see a question over here. And this is the command that I ran to look at that wit, if y'all want to try that out. And you would need to install Wasm tools. That's um, uh, a Rust CLI. Yeah? Yeah, Bailey, we're having a couple of people with the issues with Wasm tools. Do you want to go over that sure. and how to install it and why it's needed? Yeah, yeah. I, um, uh, that's a good call out. Um, so if you're following through our quick start uh, and you picked go, there's three things that you need today. Uh, we use BigGo uh, for being able to actually run tests. That's a pretty cool thing, but for another talk. Um, our compiler that we're using for Go is called TinyGo. Uh, TinyGo is really great for building for really itty bitty devices, hence the name Tiny. Um, but it's also perfect as a compiler for WebAssembly components. Um, if you consider that the typical run use case for a WebAssembly component is to start it and then take it back down, uh, so server request and take it back down because it solves zero cold starts. Um, and so with TinyGo, we can do things like not compiling in a garbage collector. Uh, so we can get a much smaller binary footprint um, and it can execute through its, its code and then come back down. Um, now this third thing here, 
this is really sort of a, a temporary thing. Uh, once we have a parser written for Go, um, we won't need it. But right now, WASM Tools is used as part of the Go tool chain. So I'm going to click that, and we'll install it. Um, now, if you have Cargo already installed, and this part I get is kind of frictionful for gophers because they're like, I don't have Rust. Um, uh, but right now, we don't have a like brew install of the CLI, but that would be a really great thing to contribute, I think. Um, you can use, uh, first you have to install Rust, so you can go to our Bailey, Rust quick start for I was that. just informed we might actually have a brew install WASM tools now. Yo, really? That's what Jonah said. So, there Who you did go. It? Brew install WASM tools. Somebody they deserve did it. a kudos thank you. Um, from stage, yeah. Whoever did that, great, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, brew install WASM tools apparently just works. Uh, give that a go. Otherwise, if you have cargo, um, you can run this command to install it. Are you getting other frequent questions? Nope, okay. Um, yeah, and so that's handy because it'll output this. And so when you're working with Go, uh, let me walk through exactly what that build did. Uh, inside main.go, you'll see this go generate command. So in Go, this is a pretty common thing that you generate um, all kinds of different types of code, code gen. Uh, in this case, we're actually generating language bindings. And we're generating language bindings uh, from basically our Go code uh, is going to compile into a WebAssembly component. Um, and we need to know how to talk to other components uh, and other APIs. And so we're running this uh, bytecode alliance tool uh, called WASM Tools Go, wit bind gen go. Um, we're running generate. We're telling it to work with our world, which is our fetch world. Uh, so you'll see that my world.wit inside my wit directory is called world fetch. Uh, and um, let me go back right here. Last thing is that it's outputting everything over here um, into generate. And so if you want to see some uh, language bindings, uh, you can. You can dive right on in. It looks kind of like generated code often is, but um, this is pretty nice because this is a, a, a new tool that's been created uh, that gives us much more idiomat idiomatic Go bindings. Uh, Joe and Randy are going to be talking about this tool in depth. Um, I don't know if it's later today or tomorrow, but at this conference. Um, so essentially, this tool generated our, our, our interfaces that we're talking to. Um, and so this is why I wanted to be able to do a part two here and expand this. I'm going to change my wit so that it uh, is pulling in blob star. Now, this is a draft contract, uh, which means um, we have not moved it through the phases yet uh, within WASI. Um, but uh, for us to try something out here today, uh, totally fine. Uh, so I'm going to uncomment that. And if I run, let's say, wash build here inside my dog fetcher uh, directory, it's going to build. And what's kind of neat is uh, uh, it just flashed. I should have had that open before. Um, let me do it one more time. Uh, so I'm going to delete blob store. Uh, and uh, what you'll see is that part of this flow is that it goes and makes a request. It looks at my wit world and says, oh, hey. Uh, uh, you don't have this. I need to generate bindings for it because you're trying to target this world. And when I say I'm targeting a world, uh, when I'm compiling, I think I have this in the readme. When I am compiling, I have it in the other one. It'll look more like this. So wash embeds uh, the sort of the compilation commands, but if you just wanted to use tiny go straight up, uh, this is what it would look like. You'd pass in dash dash target wazzy p2, the wit package that you're targeting, and then your world. So in my case, uh, I'm, I'm targeting the fetcher uh, world uh, for um, the go component. And so if we look at that, inside dog fetcher, I now have uh, the uh, generated bindings uh, for blob store. And the other thing that I did is I went through main.go and I commented out all the part two, or commented back in, um, this part two code. And inside that part two code, it's got a write object. Um, and let's dive into that. So write object is interacting with the blob store API. Um, and so sort of part of this uh, what I want to be able to do is um, write, uh, I want to go and fetch the cute dog picture. 
and then I want to write it to a blob store. And so that's essentially what we're doing here. Um, and you can, you can dive through Obstore if you want to, uh, just to, to see how to interact with it. But we, we check whether or not the container already exists. If it doesn't already exist, we create that container. Um, and I'm just making sure that everything looks cool, looking fine. So now what I'm going to do is wash build it one more time. Just to make sure I have the latest code, because I think I commented in and out the wit. I want to make sure we've generated that binding. And then, uh, let's see, do I have apps running? I do have dog fetcher running. I'm going to um, go ahead and delete this app like this. So since I have added a new dependency, we're going to step back into our development loop. So I'm going to like iterate, make sure I built this correctly. You know, it kind of is all wired together. Um, so right now, I don't have any apps running. I'm going to take down my uh, Wasm Cloud host down. Now I'm going to run wash dev one more time. And I should be able to go to localhost 8000 once it's up. Come on. Hey. Okay. So notice now that, oh, wow, that's probably way tiny for you guys. Okay, notice now that its response is no longer that file image URL. It's actually a file path. So what happened here? Uh, well, let me, let me just go to this path and see what's going on there. Um, all right, we'll go this way. What's here? Uh oh, okay, I've got some files. Uh, we've got one that I just created here. Who are you? Oh, weird. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, you need boo boo. You're gonna be the one. Looks like I'm getting bad responses for this thing. Yeah, that looks like we're getting bad responses. Yay, conference Wi-Fi. So it's storing the <laughs> HTTP response. Womp, womp, womp. That would have been so cool. I'm gonna try it one more time, and if it doesn't work out, <sighs> well, you can see my runs at last night where it did work. Um, and yeah, I have to give you the obligatory doggy photo, right? Um, so if I was actually not DDoSing this API with all of you today, um, I probably would have been able to download this cute animal photo um, and uh, it would have populated my file system. And what I think you should be asking yourself is, well, hang on, you said you were doing blob storage, right? <laughs> and that is not what you did here. Uh, so um, let's look at our component. Uh, take a quick look. Um, out of Rusty Doggies into Dogfetcher. Go into my build. All right, here's my new Dogfetcher. Um, you can see that we just built it. Uh, and I will, uh, let's do Wasm Tools uh, component wit one more time on it. Um, now it's got all these WASI APIs. I usually actually, uh, when I run this, I usually do less like this. All right, so I'm using a lot of things here. Um, here's the new blob store interfaces that I'm starting to use inside my code. Um, and I've got this incoming handler. Um, now, there is WASI file system here, but I'm actually not using it. I, I promise this is actually going through the blob store API. And we can confirm that by uh, doing the same trick that we did before um, with uh, saying uh, wash, uh, dev, actually, do I have it over here? Yeah. Let's stop it. Let's do wash dev manifest out. So actually, since I ran get and init on this, I'm going to show you the diff. Uh, let's add you. And then manifest outer dot. Of course. Thank you for the help text. All right. 
I'm regenerating a new manifest. Now, this is after having added a new dependency. So I've gone and I've added a new dependency on Blob Store. Uh, it regenerated automatically language bindings for Blob Store based on my world wit uh, that I'm targeting. I added in code to interact with that Blob Store. Uh, and now um, I have a new generated Wadam here. Why are you pulling that up, Bailey? Yeah. So that cool that cool step that's happening there, oh, Bailey's yeah. alighting something really cool that's happening. That when, Taylor made. So uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I am partial to it because I did make it. But um, the thing is, is the reason why I care so much about that is this is recent work that's gone in. Um, it's been, a, a, and I'll be talking about this later today, actually, about what's driving it. But all of these interfaces that you can share, you can share over OCI. Um, there is an OCI artifact guidance spec for. Wasm artifacts that, um, that a lot of us in the industry worked on as part of the CNCF uh, Wasm working group. And so what this does is anytime you add an interface that's well known or you've configured to be well known, it can just pull it down automatically for you. So you're not messing with any of these interface dependencies. You're able to just put it inside this world definition that Bailey's been showing you and then it just pulls it down. So we've been really trying to make sure this can integrate in with your existing systems. We have um, pretty large enterprise users of Wasm Cloud who are using, I mean, in large enterprises, and they're, they're starting to do this as well. And you're able to configure it to, you know, point to Artifactory or like any of your internal stuff that you might have as well. So that's the tooling that's going on behind the, behind the scenes. And just to reemphasize again, Wash is not do like all of this stuff is building normal components. They're not Wasm Cloud components. They're just Wasm components. And they're just using the same open source tooling, which Bailey brought up here, that everything else uses. Yeah, so Wash embeds Wackage inside it. And so that's how it was able to kind of automatically do all of the binding and work. Uh, and the thing that I wanted to show you that's new um, is this uh, Blob Store API here. Um, so if I, so what we did is we link uh, for WASI Blob Store on the Blob Store interface to a blob store file system provider. So what we have inside Wasm Cloud is uh, like an out of the box provider that you can use uh, that uh, supports the blob store API, but it actually backs it with a file system. And that's really nice. When you're a developer, you wanna be able to just go in, look at what's happening, and, and that just, you know, in theory, should work if you uh, aren't co on conference Wi-Fi. Um, and, you know, explore your little photos uh, that are coming through. Now, um, you can see that we also previously had a link for HTTP. So uh, I'm going to rename this like to Wadham because I don't like generated names that much. Uh, dev to Wadham.yaml, and I had previously added it to my uh, my stage changes here. So now we should be able to diff with Wadham what I changed. So you see that uh, one key change, okay, generated names, that kind of thing, but boom. That's the thing that I'm talking about that's brand new that we just added by adding a new dependency. And then we're easily able to regenerate all of this. Now, that's the file system, but that's not really what anybody uses in production. Uh, so let's level this up again. Uh, this time, what I would like us to do is uh, to use a tool that mirrors S3. This is sort of part of the choose your own adventure. If you would like, uh, you can use, if you have connection to S3, you have it configured, that does work. We do have a Blob Store S3 provider. Um, let me jump down to our steps for this here. Um, so I've been running with this manifest uh, just fine. Um, and not really that just fine, but you know. Um, I am going to install uh, Minio. Um, I give you the brew command here and then also the Docker command for it. Uh, if you're not familiar with Minio, it, uh, it supports the S3 API um, and is uh, object storage. Um, open source, uh, pretty nice. Uh, what I like is it has a pretty good user interface for when you're running locally. Uh, so that's why I opted to use it here. Um, and so the steps to, to switch over to Minio. Um, I am going to stop my app that was running and, uh, and iterate through it. So, I think I, I don't have it running. Oh, I do, here it is. Okay, stop him, control C, and then I am going to 
add in Minio. So I'm just gonna run this in a different repo. That's one thing you need to know when you're, when you're gonna run it is that it generates some files. Um, oops. Uh, let's not misspell that here. All right, I'm gonna see the end of Minio. I'm gonna run Minio server start. And it started it up right away, that's nice. And then I can go and look at its web UI, for example. It tells me what I need to do to log into it. So I'm gonna use those username and passwords that it's set. Cool, I could create a bucket. Uh, I'm gonna create doggies. And cool, I'm just gonna create that bucket. Okay, now I have a doggies bucket. Um, and now, next steps. We need to change out from blob store FS uh, to use the, um, to instead do S3. Um, Taylor, did you want, to, oh, he's talking. Okay, um, I, I'll do it. Uh, so we go over to our generated bottom right here. Now, I don't, I don't really love all the generated names and stuff, but I'm gonna deal with it for a second. I generally uh, replace all and change them. This is where I'm using my, my dot wasm. Um, and here's my blob store FS. So I wanna change that actually to not use blob, for, blob store FS, but I actually wanted to use S3. And I believe this is the version that we should be using. I think I have that in the docs. But the way to find out, which is probably the most useful thing, on Wasm Call, we provide a lot of different, like, you know, pluggable building blocks that anybody can use. Uh, and if I search for S3 here, this is how I usually do it. Um, I can find the Blob Store S3 package. It's a built artifact. It is indeed 0111. So I can just copy that right there and drop it in. Sure, I did that right. Okay, I did edit it correctly. So now this will, um, even though it's named Blob Store FS, okay, we got to change it. I can't do it. I can't, can't keep it like that. Let's replace it. Let's just call this Blob Store S3. Place all on this thing. Okay, great. Everything's better. Um, that's just changing out a name. It technically wouldn't have mattered, but can be kind of confusing if we don't do that. Um, now, our configuration here for connecting to this provider that's providing that capability, what I need to do is uh, change it so that it has um, different configuration. Previously, it was configured to uh, work with my temp directory. Now, I'm gonna swap it over to use uh, my Minio. Yeah, I'd love your assistance here, Taylor. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, okay. I'm one of those crazy people who runs Minio for fun at home instead of an as, so yeah, I'm just insane like that, but. Yeah, we've, um, got, uh, we've got all of our instructions here, I believe. Do yes. you wanna add and it we in already upload and talk the files? through it? Uh, we have not uploaded okay. files. So the easiest way, if you have an S3 command, like S3 command or any of those kind of things, you can do this via CLI, but we're going to use browser because yay. So she created the doggy, or we in password or doggies? Right now. We're doing doggies. Okay, doggies right now. So, um, sorry, if you go inside of Minio, if you've created that, like you, you were shown, you can go to the object browser and then click on doggies and then hit upload. And so that's where we can upload a picture. Bailey, choose your favorite dog. I'm not gonna choose your dog for you. She's gonna do a picture of her dog. Oh, apparently not. Gosh, what kind of dog mom am I that I don't have Loki on here? I'm you gonna add Carly. this one. Okay. That's, that's one of Bailey's dogs. She's quite entertaining. I have met her. She's great. Okay, so now we've put that inside the object store. So if you, that's the easiest way. If you've just started Minio, you can just use the browser to upload it. Um, so you don't have to worry about doing an S3 command and setting all the things, just make your life easy. Okay. Um, and then go ahead and with the configuration, I think now. Yeah, so um, I guess my, my step for this is to copy this config block here. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. So I'm just gonna take this whole thing straight out of our workshop repo. Uh, notice that um, we're not using our secret support inside uh, Wasm Cloud right now. Um, you know, we're using the default. Don't do this in production. Um, we have really great secret support. Uh, I believe Brooks is actually going to give a deep dive on that in main KubeCon. Yeah, you'll get, you can see that later. We'll also be showing that in our Contrib Fest on Thursday, most likely. So, yeah, just we're, you wouldn't actually put your credentials in this way. Okay, let me 
get my tabbing right. Thank you, YAML, is that, does that look right to you? Okay, one more, gosh. Do you have it in your yeah, yeah. yeah, that looks. One more. One more. Okay. So we're hitting localhost. We're passing in some credentials, and that should be enough. I think so. Where's your other? Okay. Yeah. We need to move this whole block over. Okay. Yay, YAML. Obligatory YAML complaint. There we go. Thank you. Problem. Okay. Like we all joke, we're just YAML engineers. All right. So that's my Blasi Blob Store config. I believe that is everything that I need to do. I told it where to get a new provider, so I pointed it to GHCR for that. And then I gave it some different configuration. But notice that I'm not like changing my, my app otherwise. Like uh, whether or not I was using file system or blob store, the app doesn't care, doesn't know, doesn't need to recompile. It is just pointing to uh, the blob store APIs. So let me make sure everything is down before I start again. It's all down. Uh, we've got Minio running over here. So I am gonna run wash up. That's gonna start my Wasm Cloud host. And now I'm going to wash app deploy Wadm. It deployed a new dog fetcher version. Look at my apps. It looks like it's reconciling. So this reconciling step usually happens when it, it's pulling down an image. And I can use this other command called wash app status to go and look at uh, what, what is reconciling. So right now it's doing a link scaler for, um, I think I misnamed the link. Uh, so um, this is a great tool to uh, um, sort of be able to debug live on stage. Um, I am going to get rid of all of these generated names because um, I removed it from one place, but I didn't remove it from everywhere else. Um, so I'm just gonna delete it like this. All gone. And um, if there are any other generated names, like this one, ah, that one can stay. And I gotta, basically the thing is that it's based on the name of my link. So I gotta make sure that that name matched my other name. And my other name uh, had the, uh, the generated name in front of it. So I'm gonna delete my previous app. It should still say reconciling because I cannot um, fulfill that link. But now I should be able to wash out deploy wadm.yaml. And, oh, I didn't, yeah, that's fine. Wash app list. And now it says deployed. Okay, so um, it should, in theory, work. Let's find out. I've been having not the best luck, but that's okay. That's why you do live demos, live by them, die by them. So my app is now serving. Uh, it uh, says that it went to Blob Store in here. Um, but let's see. I now have a Lucy. Who's Lucy? Let's see. Oh, it's four kilobytes, so it still didn't download correctly. <sighs> well, uh, I think uh, they probably have something very intelligent that is DDoSing me <laughs> or recognize that I'm hitting this API too often, um, and I'm only getting those initial four kilobytes. But uh, you can see that our WASM uh, component uh, did get wired up with the provider, uh, which in this case was now an S3 provider. Uh, that is actually uh, um, connected to Minio that's running on my MacBook. Um, let us dive into a little bit more on the OCI side of things. So what I'm trying to take you through is the, the initial build journey for building a WebAssembly component. We've worked through some of the Compose stuff. Basically, uh, we, um, we went through here. 
where we kind of were able to choose our own provider. So uh, we started with file system, swapped over to blob store, uh, and now I think it's time to start doing the much scarier part of our journey, which is why I changed the font to Goosebumps. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read their Choose Their Own Adventure books inside Goosebumps, but um, you know, one thing that often scares developers is actually deploying out into production. Um, while um, the API that I'm hitting isn't serving me anymore, um, I still was able to work without changing my application at all. I just changed out my configuration, and I was able to use a, you know, an S3 blob store that gives me a lot of more properties of scalability and reliability. Uh, but now, what about deploying into something, uh, some kind of infrastructure that's a little bit scarier? Uh, and that's called Kubernetes. So let's do it. Um, the way that Wasm Cloud works uh, and that, uh, the way that it deploys into Kubernetes is we have a Wasm Cloud operator. Um, and I have inside the workshop repo included a script uh, for doing that. Let me, um, and you know what? I think I, I'm gonna switch to the, the Rust uh, side of things uh, just in case there's something strange happening with my build there. Um, and so this is my workshop repo. Uh, inside it, I have a Kubernetes folder. And inside that Kubernetes folder, I, I walk through kind of some of the things that we're setting up. But basically, there's a script here. Um, and what I'll do, so another tool that you need to install, if you don't have it already, is Kind. Uh, kind is a, a way that Kubernetes itself, the project, tests its project. But also, uh, Kind is something that I'm able to run locally. So. Um, if you have a kubectl access to some other Kubernetes cluster, uh, choose your own adventure, you can, you can run through the steps and, and you should be able to get to success because the way that we deploy this is just with a really simple Helm chart. Um, it's uh, the Wasm Cloud Platform Helm chart. Uh, if you wanna really check out where the source code for that one is, uh, you can go to the Wasm Cloud main repo. Inside there, we have our chart. Uh, and um, it's sort of our all-in-one uh, platform chart. So um, I've uh, brought it in. So, uh, you know, Taylor may be a bit more of a fan of Helm having uh, worked on the project, uh, but I personally really like working with Customize uh, when I do deployments. And so um, I've structured this repository uh, in a way that is pretty GitOps friendly. Um, and uh, I've already rendered this chart here. Um, so. Uh, it, if you go to the Wasm Cloud main page and you want to work through the normal uh, um, install instructions, we have an operator guide, and then we just have a boatload of deployment guides for the thing that you want to choose, anything under the sun, because that's the thing about Wasm. It can go just basically anywhere. Um, so the one, the flow that I'm basically going to walk through here is this deploy with kind. Um, and this is your step here to install kind. And then um, a little step here to be able to set up ingress for kind. So I'm going to CD into this repo right here. All right, I'm in it. Do I have the latest? Yes. I'm going to go into my Kate's folder. CD into deploy. And that's right. Yeah. Let's run scripts, set up kind. Oh, hang on. Had an extra cluster. Okay. Now, if you're wondering how, how can I get rid of my cluster, there's your command. Um, set up kind, here we go. And if you want to install the Helm chart, here's, here's the Helm uh, command for that, for you Helm folks. And what it's doing right now, it's creating my cluster. Um, it takes a, you know, a handful of seconds to be able to spin up all the way. I'm asking a lot of it on conference Wi-Fi here. Okay, all right, so now what it just ran through is it just applied uh, my Wasm Cloud platform manifest. Uh, that comes with a couple of different things that we need to be able to run the Wasm Cloud platform. Um, 
It also uh, has deployed uh, in Ingress Nginx. That's actually what we're waiting on right now. Um, so I want to be able to ingress into my Kubernetes cluster here. Um, and so we're letting ingress nginx spin up, basically. Um, and we can actually watch it's, what it's doing by, um, oh, ah, no point. Um, so now uh, I have successfully uh, deployed, uh, it looks like, um, all the things for Wasm Cloud, the Wasm Cloud operator. Um, now uh, I can tell that works. Now we're checking to make sure that NATS, which is a CNCF project that Wasm Cloud builds on top of, uh, and NATS is sort of the way that we get, um, we're, we do event-driven uh, applications, and so NATS is sort of our underlying fabric for that, and that's where we get a lot of our reliability and scalability properties. And actually, while we're, while we're waiting on that to chug along, let me show you one more thing we could do. So I pulled down Rusty Doggies, so let's use that. Uh, and I definitely wash built it. Yes. Oh, it's done. oh wow, okay, my, my thing's already, oh, it's already done. Still not up yet though. I think it's probably pulling. Hello from us. Okay, okay. There you go. All it's right. always network. So <laughs> let me pull back up the script that we just ran through. Um, it didn't do, it didn't do like a crazy amount, right? Um, typically, you probably already have all of this running in, in your production Kubernetes cluster uh, with all of your, your, your things that you need. Uh, and your mission as a, a uh, developer is, you know, hey, uh, maybe your princess is in another cluster, uh, aka your data storage, and I need to be able to deploy my WebAssembly component and applications out into uh, Kubernetes. So uh, we deployed the platform chart. Uh, we waited for things to come together, which took a few seconds. Uh, but then we did this last step here, and that's the part that's most interesting. So let's dive into that. Inside my apps, I, um, I basically just referenced Wadam because we installed a custom resource definition into my cluster uh, that already now knows about WebAssembly applications. I was able to use a uh, Wadam uh, basically manifest uh, to be able to run this up. And um, if I have a component that uh, only needs HTTP, uh, you could swap out this artifact here. We only have a few minutes left, so I don't think I'm gonna like swap around, um, but uh, essentially, you should be able to take the WDAM that you built and drop it here, rerun the script, and it'll automatically redeploy it. Uh, and we could um, probably show like kube control get applications. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. Let's, Let's do that. try that. Like this? Uh, I think it's applications. I always have to remember. There we go. Boom. Yeah. So this is this one here uh, is not the app that we built, um, but just as easily we could swap over to it. I actually kind of want to try. Um, so, if well, we, while Bailey's doing that, I'll kind of sum that up. Yeah. So, essentially, like what, what Bailey's showing is if you install the Wasm Cloud operator, it uses the aggregation APIs to pull in, and you can just use Wadam like you would another Kubernetes manifest, which is great. So, it integrates in with your GitOps and whatever else you've set up that way. But the point is, you can now glue in multiple things. You can you could glue multiple Kubernetes clusters together as part of the same Wasm Cloud cluster. We call them lattices. Um, to kind of indicate this idea of, of connectivity. And you could also connect it with some edge devices that are connected to those two Kubernetes clusters you just connected together. Um, all of those things are possible because of how Wasm Cloud's architect, and so you can take these things you're building and go from local laptop to a cluster to hyper-distributed, whatever your needs are. Um, and then co-locate things close to data, away from data, Whatever you want to do, it basically lets that flexibility happen because once again, you're just coding against interfaces. Everything here is always behind an interface. So it, this really separates the, the responsibilities of developers and platform engineers. Platform engineers can focus on providing those capabilities and organizing things in a way, like and architecting them in the way that's best for what they need. And developers can focus on writing their code behind these interfaces. Yeah. Did you get this working? 
I'm, I'm not gonna go for it. We only have a minute, so it's better to just wrap. <laughs> but um, essentially, I, I, I was able to, I'm able to use a command uh, called wash push. This also embeds a lot of the work that Taylor's been doing upstream in both the CNCF uh, WASM working group and in the Bytecode Alliance. That makes it so that I can package a dot WASM as an OCI artifact. And then when I'm running uh, on you know, inside kind, I can just reference this artifact that I built, which is really handy. Um, so sort of the idea here is that we've taken you through building component, iterating, kind of booting up through a developer loop, adding in a dependency, uh, linking all that together, swapping out that provider for a totally different type of provider, because, but because I'm over interfaces, it doesn't matter to the component, it doesn't have to recompile, rebuild. Um, and then, you know, you can put this basically anywhere. Um, and so I am gonna just round us back up to um, essentially, if you go through as a gopher or a rest station, you should be able to uh, build two different types of applications. But in reality, a lot of the same commands that I was using are unified across the entire experience. And uh, I'm able to basically take that exact same manifest that I can work on locally, I can run it on Kubernetes, I can run it on the edge. Um, and so sort of the idea is that we can really simplify what development uh, and uh, simplify the lives of platform engineers uh, by using technology like CNCF Wasm Cloud. Yep. So thank you everyone for coming and participation. We look forward to seeing you. Like I said, we have several other talks. We have the Wasm Cloud Contrib Fest on Thursday if you want to get involved with the project or write more components or these, even these providers. Um, and then we have more conversations on how all this actually works underneath the hood in a standards forward way. Um, tomorrow, I'll be giving a talk with uh, Roman who uh, did a lot of this work as well. So we hope to see you there and hope you enjoy the rest of your WasmCon. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thank you.